Welcome back. We are heading into our final game of the day. Team Dignitas versus Team Dragon Knights. And so far this split, Dig has given us our hottest and our coldest games. Yeah, pretty bipolar there. They went from a game in which they didn't lose a single, uh, didn't get a single turret, right. to then denying their opponents Cloud9 a single turret. So Azingi was a big part of that because he brought great <laughs> jungle pressure in their second game and early kills on Sneaky to set Cloud9 behind. That was his best game in terms of presence and pressure from a jungler that he has had in his LCS career. And Dignitas, they continued to pressure that advantage that he gave them to close out a very clean win against yeah, C9. Yeah, squeaky clean. Yeah, and that's something I want to see Dignitas go more towards is freeing up Kiwi Kid and Core JJ because they're big keys to Dignitas' success. And when mm -hmm. the map is opened up and they can just roam around like those famous Kiwi Kid roams and Core JJ out of lane with Sivir and Callista, like he's able to pull off a yeah. lot of great moves. And that seems to be the formula of success for them. And it, it's kind of strange because Dignitas, this is the best they've looked in a while, and it's given their fans a reason to be excited again for this team, because I am really hoping that they come out with a strategy again and that they're able to take it to TDK and show off a little yeah. bit of this new Dignitas. It seems like they are definitely more comfortable in their own skin as the team that they are now. And now they're facing TDK, who once again will be starting three substitute players while their main starters handle visa issues. Yeah, the sub-squad performed pretty well for sub-squad considering how they had their right. limited practice time together before week one. And this week, it's not going to be too much better because TDK, they're actually using a lot of forward thinking here, and they're limiting their practice time with the sub squad mm -hmm. to practice with their eventual roster. They're already scrimming with Emperor, with Ninja, with Smoothie right. in there so that when they get in the roster in the LCS, that they don't have that over the time where they have this right. thing where they're like, we still have to adjust these players. They're already adjusting to them now, and this is kind of the placeholder. But word is that they will be in for week three and yes, possibly Smoothie tomorrow. We will have to see. It's going to be a tough road for these guys. We see a lot of teams start off at the beginning of a split and not be able to do much because of a sub squad, because of, of whatever. And that kind of seems to have a, a weight during the entire split. Yeah, and a lot of that weight needs to be picked up by the guys who are on the roster themselves yeah. during this sub time. It's Seraf and Kez who yeah. both performed really well despite not having a team that they're familiar with. So Seraf and Kez, they've been together since the beginning of the Challenger, yep. Challenger season with TDK. And... Kez, when he left LCS on complexity, he wasn't that convincing of a jungler. His early game pressure was lacking. We've seen more of that from him, and that's really what this game is going to be all about for me, is watching these junglers and seeing who exerts more early game yep. pressure and starts growing into that role, because these are both junglers that have struggled in that regard in their LCS careers. Right, and even though TDK have had another week with their subs, Shifter thinks it still gives Dignitas their advantage. The biggest issue of playing with subs is that, you know, you don't really know how your teammates think because, you know, you're just playing with it for like two or three weeks or whatever. So, you know, your, your team fighting is not going to be as smooth. Your your rotations aren't going to be as smooth. It's just usually going to be the lane phase. And, you know, if your junglers can get them ahead and snowball off of that. So playing with subs is definitely really tough in a team aspect. Yeah, and having the jungler snowball is going to be the big thing I'm looking out for. Like I said, whoever gets that advantage, if your team fighting's not on point, if your rotations aren't on point, just roll over them with a ball of stats you created in the lane phase. Hopefully you can. You don't get caught off guard by like kind of like JV team when you play against them and they just fake you out. Well, let's check out the starting lineups and see if that happens. On the blue side, it's Team Dignitas. That's Gamsu in the top lane, a Zengi in the jungle, Shifter in mid, Core JJ at AD carry, and Kiwi Kid at support. And on the red side, it's Team Dragon Knights. Top lane is Seraph, jungler is Kez, mid lane is Bishu, AD carry, lap man, and support, baby. Hey, back in the days, that's all they relied on was solo Q prowess to be good at League of Legends. You can ask Kobe. He was on those teams. He was on the, There was like no strategy. Just go straight forward, take the fight. That was the strategy that they used. <laughs> Guarantee it, you can ask them yourself. However, there is more strategy now as the LCS has come about in the past few years where teams need to get themselves in a house. Is there more strategy?